June 1st, 2014. My name is Jason Ben Parsons and I'm an autistic self-advocate. This is the third video in a series talking about what the autistic self-advocacy community of Phoenix, Arizona, USA has done to play by the rules in order to get our, meet, our needs met and, and the fact that that in spite of us following the rules, we have not had our needs met, but in fact have been completely ignored whenever we try to express our grievances. And so in this third video, what I'm wanting to do is focus on specifically you know, you know, what we have done in order to try to build bridges with the, um, the autism establishment. And you know, I, I gave a couple of examples yeah, in the previous video, the previous two videos, but in this video, I want to talk specifically about the conferences that we held annually for three consecutive years and the fact that the autism establishment just completely ignored them. But nevertheless, you know, to you know, start this off, you know, we need to go once again back to March of 2010 and the, the um, autism conference that I attended at that time. and. Um, and you know, a lot of good came out of it, but another thing that came out of it was the fact that autistics had a lot more to share with the public than what we were given the opportunity to do. And so I came up with this idea about, well, let's have our own conferences, not as a protest of what the other conferences are sharing, but basically to augment them. And as I would later explain it to, um, to Jim Adams, in March of 2011, um, a month and a half before our first conference, um, you know, basically, the the major conferences would would would, um, would provide people with the um, the leading es experts giving cutting edge knowledge of autism uh, to the public, while we would focus on giving a more personal and intimate understanding. Of autism, and and I figured that this was something that could you know, work uh, you know harmoniously together, and so well we wouldn't really be rivals, but you know we would just simply present separate aspects of autism, and so um, I first presented this to Tara, um, you know when we were on our way to a special meeting, of a special guest speaker had come to town uh, the first Saturday of. Um, well, actually, first weekend of April of 2010, and so um, so I talked to Tara on our way there, and she thought it was a great idea, and then we shared it with um, Sue and others, you know, involved involved with the uh, autistic community, and everybody thought it was a great idea, and so um, and so we we set forth to um, plan this, and um, and so in May of of that year, I I got some um, the support of the, my pastor's wife. You know that yes, we could use our facilities, but we would um, have to do all the work as far as as organizing it and so on and so forth. It's like okay, no problem. And so then in October of 2010, when when um, the church gave official support for the Autism Ambassadors Court, we officially set a date for the first conference, which would be. Um, April 2011 and would be done annually um, during April um, which is Autism Awareness Month and so anyways um, you know, so, so, um, so, so we begin to plan this now keep in mind who's uh, involved with running this this conference okay um, forget about me you know, at the time I was pretty much a nobody um, uh, and so um, you know, I, you know, I, I um, didn't even view myself as somebody who would have a major role in speaking, but simply be providing um, a venue mainly for Sue and Tara as well as other autistics to um, present information. But basically, my original idea would be that Sue and Tara you know, would be highlighted. Okay, and so again, Sue Galbach is a now retired occupational therapist and Tara Marshall is a speech language pathology assistant, both of whom are autistics. So they understand autism from both a personal and professional point of view. Okay, both of them have been uh, the co-organizers of our autism support group. 
as of the first conference that they had been you know that they had been together for 10 years co-organizing uh, that group so if anybody is qualified to speak on what are the issues that autistics keep talking about you know that are most important to autistics and then give information about those issues to teach on those specific issues who who's more qualified than these two you know Sue and Tara you know and so um, and, and then so by the time the first conference rolled around you know I had learned so much under them that I was ready to do um, a presentation of my own and so um, and, and so what we you know so we put, put the word out and you know, Sue Dalva because of her prestige you know, throughout the autism community. Oh, I forgot to also mention the fact that, that our support group, it, it, um, their um, food, well, their snacks, room, and website is paid for by the Autism Society of Greater Phoenix. Okay, and so, so we are well known throughout the entire you know, autism community and every autism professional that, that wants to sell a bill of goods to to autistics come and talk to us and so um, so when I say that the Sue Galbach had probably as as complete of a list of who's who in the autism community you know um, in her contacts you know basically yeah she did you know and so everybody got word that that we were going to have these conferences and so so um you know so the first year Tara and I actually sat down you know, you know over the phone and you know to plan the itinerary the second year Sue and I you know talked in person you know to plan the itinerary and so with all of these with all this you know going into these conferences all this expertise going in this conference don't you think that anybody who is wanting to have the most complete understanding of autism possible would jump at the opportunity to to um, you know to attend such a, such a conference? Well, you would be wrong because not one single organization that gets all the money and all the attention come Autism Awareness Month in April attended. Not one single one. Uh, a few mom and pop organizations showed up, but. But as far as the three years that we had the conferences, I would say roughly half the attendance was the result of my church's bulletin, and probably about 30 to 40 percent of my attendance was from um, Sue Dalbuck's, um, um Well, no, um, well, it was from, from uh, our support group, with the rest being either from Sue Dalbuck's, um email um, contact lists as well as friends of those you know, on her contact list. But anyways, so basically, yeah, about half of them from my church and about 30 to 40 percent of them from our autistic support group and that's it. Okay, um, but as far as all the major organizations that get all the time, all the money and all the attention, none of them ever showed up to any of our conferences and, and so you know, we also, um, well, I, you know, with the support of, of my church, held weekly meetings at my church, and then, and then a second meeting every week at, at a autistic friend's home. Okay, one in my church, one in East Valley. Okay, and and none of the major organizations showed up. Um, we started, or, or you know, um, I started holding monthly meetings at the Disability Empowerment Center. Which, um, which every every single business, you know, it, so it well, basically to run a suite in that office complex, you basically have to have something to do with with disabilities, and so every single one of those organizations somehow, you know, whether they're autism specific or not, you know, uh, well, there might be a few that it's you know that's um, that have no no correlation with autism, but the bottom line is. Of all those organizations, the only one that showed up was Johnny and Friends, um, and so, so you know that that's, and, you know, and that's it in, in the nutshell. You know, what more are we supposed to do in order to build bridges? You know, um, 
you know, criticize me all, all you want for how, you know, I'm not playing by the rules, you know, and, and you know, and if I follow the rules that, that you know, that people respond, well, the fact is, no, they haven't responded, okay, um, and so, so, um, so, so that then, and, um, at, after the second conference, that yeah, yielded very little, uh, I came up with this idea, uh, this idea to, to um, you know, break down the walls of segregation between autistics, parents, and teachers by volunteering at a um, at Mountain View School, which is right across the street from my church, and um, you know, with, with the hopes of being able to work with special ed children, and um, and in order to show, you know, uh, you know, what kind of asset that autistics can be. In, the, you know, in discussing this subject and showing that, that we can provide unique insights to the teachers. And the fact is, I was never given the opportunity to work with the, you know, in the actual classrooms. I was you know, put in the library, and after about a year, I, um, I finally, um, you, know, you know, it finally occurred to me that it's, you know, that, it's, that, they're, that they're just making excuses for why they're not putting me in, in the classroom. And, and so I, I finally did a secret, re, a, secret re, a secret recording of a meeting with the principal and as well as with um, a second meeting with, um, with Molly Miller, who's the special um, special special services specialist which is you know their special ed department but anyways um, and, and I secretly recorded those meetings and and I put the first one online the second one I can't put online because it's a 20 minute video and I cannot figure out how to split it and but bottom line is you know I've got proof that, that I was discriminated against you know, you know with the school Okay, and if you go to um, you know, AAC.com and, and you look under the grievance tabs and Mountain View School, you'll see the first video and an explanation as to what's on the first video. Nevertheless, um, nobody will, will even give me the time of day in order to, you know, to, to review the video and to make the principal answer my questions, okay? Uh, I have some very pointed questions, you know, some very serious issues I have, and everybody is running behind the principal, assuming that the autistic must be in the wrong because we all know that anytime there's a conflict between autistics and non-autistics, it's always the autistic's fault. You know, the, the non-autistic can never be making the mistake. And, and so, so that's, you know, basically, um, you know, you know, what I've come to as far as as to why I felt it necessary to you know, to go, go to these extreme measures is that everything else that I've done, you know, in order to deal with, with this in a traditional and discreet manner, I've gotten absolutely no support from anybody. And and I've gotten the attention of nobody and so I so I'm left with no other choice. If if, if no, if you believe I shouldn't be doing this, then you should talk to me and provide me with an alternative. Not just tell me, oh, you should do this, you should do that. You need to be the solution. Okay? If you're not willing to be the solution, then quite frankly, I don't want your input. It's that simple. Either be the solution to the problem or keep your opinions to yourself. That's all I have to say.